are the same account. I think it's highly questionable. I wouldn't mm -hmm. argue to the end if a guy said it is the same account, just expressed in a different way. Right. I wouldn't fight a guy to the end. But I think that there's at least some evidence to suggest that Jesus described how to pray in more than one instance. Right. Um, when I look at Matthew and he says the, the Our Father, a big foundation for what he's talking about there is not... Um, I don't even want to say it's not. A big foundation of what he's doing there is revealing that the prayer that the scribes and Pharisees were busy with was not actually prayer at all, right? If you go back, if he says, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, right. you are not going to experience God's mercy for you. Right. You are not going to experience his peace and his love and his joy. You're not going to know what it feels like to not keep a record of wrongs committed against you. You're not going to know what it feels like to believe the best about everyone around you. You're not going to know what it feels like to love your enemies. Right. And so he says, when, don't pray like these scribes and Pharisees pray. Yeah, right. Who right. do it in public in order to be seen by others. Right. Because basically the only reason why they're praying is because they want people to think, look how holy they are. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Exactly. Look how holy we are. Right. And so they're praying in the public square for everybody to see. Look how holy we are. And then he goes into all they're busy with is vain repetition. Right. Meaning that. They just reciting the thing over and over and over, all the while, not even knowing who God is or knowing what's in his heart. Mm -hmm. They're not even knowing what it is that they're reciting. They've just been handed this thing that says, you should say this at this time. And they don't even know what it means. And so they're just busy vainly saying things over and over and over and over and over again. Right? And so Jesus is coming and talking about, listen, in entreating to God or connecting with God is about your heart connecting with his heart. So... Let us understand his heart. And that's mm -hmm. what he goes down to. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into all these things where he describes what his will is. You, you, you lead us not into temptation. You deliver us from evil. You forgive us for our sin, of our sin so that we can find forgiveness dwelling in us and us not keeping a record of wrongs committed there against us. Yes, right? Yeah. He goes into everything God does. He's not praying from the foundation of asking God not to lead him into to temptation. Right. Who God is makes it impossible for him to lead anybody into temptation. Right. He James comes and says, let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God. Right. Right? Because he says God can't <coughs> tempt a person with evil. So when Jesus says, lead us not in temptation, he's not asking him. He's acknowledging you don't lead us into temptation. You actually lead us away from temptation. You actually secure our hearts in the midst of temptation, meaning you comfort our hearts in the midst of temptation, yes. making a way for us to be delivered from it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You deliver us from a life of laboring and toiling by comforting us in the midst of temptation, right? Yeah. You put us to rest when we're being tempted by the weakness and the death in the earth to enlist our own ability to have life. You put us to rest by showing us that you draw near to us and join, braid it yourself together with us, yeah. braid it us together with you in your life. You put us to rest, right? right? right. And, and so Jesus is acknowledging who and what God is and what is in God's heart for him, for people, for the world, for creation, all of that. Yeah. Right? right? I believe.